Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Today I will be showcasing how to do many-to-many -many relationships in SQLize. And uh, I have myself been working with SQLize lately because I had to do some backend stuff that had to connect to a Postgres database. And using a ORM can save a bunch of time. So I decided to pick up SQLize and um, I had a few problems in the beginning understanding how uh, it all worked out with the associations because I haven't used an ORM before actually. And uh, I just today I'm just going to try to remove some of that confusion and just give you some examples how to do it. Because yeah, if you search on Google there will be a lot of outdated docs out there since SQLize is quite a big library, has many versions. Um, yeah, so it can be a little confusing. Anyway, I've set up an index.js file here and I will, well, first of all, to install SQLize, I did yarn add SQLize and also SQLite free because I'm going to be using an in-memory a database just for this example. If you're working with Postgres or MySQL or some other SQL database, you, yeah, well, go to the docs and figure out what library you need since it will depend on that. But for this one, SQLite free should do it. Okay, so in SQLize, um, yeah, I'm just gonna do a quick rundown of what I've done so far in the code here. So, um, so far I've just uh, acquired SQLize, uh, the object SQLize and then data types. And I create a main function here, just one function to do all the code, just to make it more simple. And uh, yeah, so here I define my SQLize object. I put in SQLite memory because this is the database I want to use. And then I put logging to false since SQLize will uh, log everything uh, as soon as you start your program. And I don't really need that information. Okay, so here next is my models. So the models is uh, the data that I want to store. So I want to store some repository data and some user data. And uh, in SQLize there are different ways to define the models. Check the docs for that. I'm just going to be using the define method on the SQLize object here. And as the first parameter I'm putting in the name of the model. And the second one is an object of all the attributes. So here I have name, just name. And for the user I have username, which is, yeah, they're both strings and in this case, I want them both to be unique. You can also pass in other props, default value, other things in here, which are cool. Okay, <clears throat> so now for the association itself. So if we go down a little bit here, so here, here, this is where the association part happens. We need to call belongs to many on each of our models that we want to associate with each other. And then as the first argument, we assign the one we want to, we assign the model to, associate the model to. So I want repository to belong to user. And I want user to belong to repository. And a second parameter, you can see I'm passing in um, the through keyword here and then specifying a string here. And this string is just telling me the name of the association, basically. And this part up here, I didn't go through it. And the reason is I don't really need this. This is enough for the program to work, for the association to happen. But I want to create an additional property, in this case, uh, an expiration date. So I have call I call I call define on the SQLize object here, and then just put in the user repository's uh, name here, as I did down here, just to get that extra property in there. So for each user repository connection, 
we do have an expiration date attached. And the default value for that one will be the current date. Okay. Now, now for the next part, oh, I just need to explain the sync. So I'm doing an await sync here um, because I have created my models, I created my association, and now I want that um, data to be synchronized to the database I'm using. And in this case, it's SQLite in memory. So the stuff I made up here will now be used a sync to the database. So now I can start querying stuff and other things. So, okay, let's go to the querying, querying part. And um, how do we do that? Well, let's just try something very basic first. So let's try to get all the users here. So let's do await users or user find all. Okay. And let's make sure we call this main function here. So like this, and then let's try to log out our users. Let's do node index. Okay. So here it seems like we are getting just one user, even though this output is not really nice. And this user is inside an array. Okay. Now when we are querying many to many relationships, we need to remember to put in this include keyword. And then specify what we want to include. So since we want to create a user and we want to get the repositories, we can put in repository like this. Okay. And since we did get back, oh, let's just uh, try to run this then to see the difference. It's still not that readable, but you can see up here, we now have the repositories um, array here attached to our user. So let's go back and then clean it up a little bit here. So let's do uh, users for each. And then let's try to lock out user. But this time let's call the to JSON. This should create a much more readable output. Yeah, cool. So we have our user here, we have the repo here, and we may notice that in addition to the repo, we have the user repositories association in here, which is an object. Now let's try to look inside that object. That'll be interesting. So for each user, let's just, uh, hard coded here. So let's do console log user um, repositories, right? Repositories. This is a difficult word to spell. And then choose the first item. And then we want to target user repositories like this. That should do it. So I'm trying to hit this key right now with my console log. So let's have a look. Um, I spell repositories wrong. I'm pretty sure. Repo repositories. Yeah. Okay, that's difficult. If we do it again, we get an ugly object here. So let's go back and make sure we call to JSON and that one. All right, this is, this is neat. So finally we got our association and we can see that and repository ID and a user ID was added here. Um, so, and we also have our expiration date. And SQLite also added some created and updated ad fields. Very cool. Now, 
this was kind of, no, I wouldn't say a lot of work, but we had to loop over the users and then go into the repositories and then go into the user repositories to get this information. So if we beforehand know what association we are looking for, we can do something a little more simple here. So let's say we want repo one, test repo, user one, user stuff. Let's say we want that. So to do that, we need to, on user repos up here, we need to call, uh, we may call, for example, find one. And then we can add a where clause in here, specifying which one we are looking for. So since we just have one repo, one user, we are looking for repository ID one and user ID one. And remember to call a wait here, since we're doing a database lookup. So if we try to log that, let's see if we actually get that, that would be cool. It seems like we got it. Once again, I forgot to call to JSON. But if we to JSON that, it can become a little more clear. Yeah, here it is. Okay. So there are, there are different ways to query the menu to menu association, depending on whether we want to do it all the way at the user level, then go into repos and then find it there or directly um, do it like this. And um, yeah, let's uh, let's see what can we do with this as association just as a last thing here. So now we have the association, we can just like all of the other models, we have everything available here. So. We could, for example, do destroy in case we want to delete that association like this. And um, if we try to call that and log out the ID, it should return the number of the association removed. So if I go in here, um, Okay, it just seems like it logs the whole thing. All right. So if I try to query once again, after calling destroy, it should be gone, right? So let's try to log out association one here. Yeah. As you can see, we get null at the very end here, meaning that when we try to query it again after destroying it, we didn't get anything, so it says null. So our, the destroy method here worked fine after we grabbed our association like this. Okay, cool. Um, that That's it for this video. Hope you guys learned something. And if you did, leave a like. And I'll see you in the next one.